Now that there's a Broadway musical and people are falling in love with Alexander Hamilton, I think it's important for people to realize that most politicians have mixed legacies, and that certainly is true for Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton could be a difficult person. You know, I think he's a complicated person. So clearly, you know, he had friends and people who loved him, and he was seemingly charismatic and high energy kind of an individual. There are two Hamiltons. There was the public Hamilton, who was guided by virtue and who only wanted to serve the public good. And then there's the private Hamilton. And the private Hamilton is somebody who has extramarital affairs, whose values might contradict the public good. But Hamilton actually argued that his private life should not impact the way people think about his public life. One of the important things to know about Hamilton is that at a very early point, I mean, still during the revolution, he became convinced that there needed to be a stronger national government. So he's a really early and really loud nationalist. He was called a monarchist for a long time. His response to that was, no, I'm not a monarchist because people are getting elected into office and if you don't like them, you can elect them out. On the other hand, he really was trying to give as much power as possible to the government. Hamilton became the lightning rod for the first party system. And part of the reason he's the focus is because nobody can attack Washington. And so when the Jeffersonians and others need somebody to attack as this monarchist, as this person who's undermining the revolutionary values, they can't attack Washington. Washington is the revolution. It's Hamilton that they can focus on. Hamilton, when he became Secretary of the Treasury, he had a really pretty daunting challenge in front of him. There was just massive amounts of debt and no national structure of finance. Now, he was the perfect guy for that job. What he was really good at was administrating. Washington and Hamilton both realized that in order for the country to be an international player, their debt needed to be sound. And so Hamilton had the unpopular but essential idea to unite the debt as one common debt that was shared by the nation. And that, more than anything else, I think helped establish the United States. Hamilton has sort of a mixed legacy, particularly as Secretary of the Treasury. On the one hand, he was a vital force for establishing national credit. He also was someone who was trying as hard as he could to empower the national government, not trying to necessarily create a monarchy, but he believed that the British monarchy was the finest government on the face of the earth. He was not shy about saying that. So that's an extreme guy, and he's not the only person who believes that, but he was a person who had a lot of power and was working towards that point of view. So some of the impact of that was good, and some of the impact of that was scary. His policies are so polarizing that people begin to rise up and protest against them. Hamilton and our perception of him has changed over time. He was reviled in his own lifetime and immediately afterwards, but then as America's economy changed, and as the institutions that support this economy have changed, so too have our perceptions of Hamilton. I think it was important to have his voice there pushing. It was really also important to have other voices pushing against him. I think we don't often think of the founding as a dialogue, as a debate, but it was. And I think that many different voices needed to be part of that debate for whatever came out of that moment to be even somewhat balanced. Thank you.